Page 73b, <clears throat> it's a continuation of our discussion of the 39 Melachot. We explained that they are 39 category of work, Melachot, that forbidden on Shabbat. The Mishnah elaborated and gave us a very clear list, and we explained each of them. Now we're going to expand it, and we see later the practical Melachot, from those Avot and Toladot. Happy Hanukkah and Happy Rosh Chodesh. Today is a very special day. It's a uh, short day with a lot of work. It's a uh, Hanukkah. And there are some who say that today, Rabbi Meir Balanes, it's a uh, special um, uh, tradition to light the candles for, for his memory. And it's a morning of candles, candles of Hanukkah running to the uh, sixth day of Hanukkah and going to take out two Sifrei Torah this morning. Um, this upcoming Shabbat is the Shabbat of the uh, story of Yosef, of Joseph, a, uh, a biblical name that uh, became our role model, man that came from a family that uh, um, suffered a lot of uh, turmoil but we learn from his tremendous behavior between, between losing his mother, behavior with, with his brothers, turn out in the jail and then ends up in the highest level of viceroy king of Egypt, that when a person, as much as it's hard sometimes, follow the way that Hashem asks us to do and do it right, he can raise up to the levels that way above his dream and expectations. It's also the famous Bach that tells us that when it's come to the festival of Hanukkah, the uh, ancient Assyrian, Assyrian Greek, put a three very strong decrees against us. One is the Brit Milah, the second one was the Shabbat, mm -hmm. and the third one is Rosh Chodesh. So the Bach asked a question, Brit Milah, we understand, that's the sign, clear sign between a fellow Jew and everyone else, especially in those days. Shabbat, the famous Chafetz Chaim, that tells us, and that's what we study here, Chafetz Chaim said when you go to a store and you see a, a sign, they're selling, whatever it is, here you have the Wawa. So even it's closed, you know that maybe it's... Um, the owner needs to go away some week or two. But the minute you see a truck with a letter pulling out the sign, you know that it's over. And Shabbat is the ot, is the sign that there is a communication. We're living now in a world of communication. Everything is the uh, iPad and the email and the, and the communication and fax and say uh, communication. So you can have a person that one, one, one person is in Israel, another person in New Zealand, and they communicate it constantly, so the oath, the communication between Hashem and us is the Shabbat. Rosh Chodesh, it's because of the rabbis. Who made the Rosh Chodesh? The sages of Chochmei Adorot. And because the sages are the one who instituted it, they have a motivation to take away, to uproot it, the source of, of inspiration and source of learning, which is our sages. I'm giving that as introduction, first and foremost, to understand the value of what we study. Also to know that this idea of the 39 Melachot that they're written from the Torah is the heart, is the institution of the holiness of Shabbat. And now we zoom in and see what's the elaboration of the 39 Melachot, 73b, the top of the page. Minyana Lamali. This question you see several times already. Minyana Lamali meaning? No, help me. Minyana Lamali. What does that mean? Why we need to? Specify the number of uh, Melachot. Why need to spell? Thank you. Why need to specify the number of Melachot? Since we have already the list, every kid first grade you count, and you know that it's all together 39. So Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan came up and he said something 
very beautiful and deep. He said, שאם עשאם כולם בהיעלם אחד, חייב על כל אחת ואחת. So he hold that if one performed all the prohibition labors in the source of the lap of awareness, doing which we is unaware in one time. So for sure it looks like a little bit stretched, but the point is if you do several melachot together, so he said he hold that chayav al kol achad v'echad, the maximum, the maximum you can hold it's 39 sin offering, which means the Mishnah tells us that they all together 39 type of work in order to tell us that even a person violated unwittingly one time um, um, uh, or all together all of them um, such as let's say a person did three together so Rabbi Yochan hold that even you do it three together, you may feel that you need to bring only one sin offering. He said, no, you have to bring um, um, uh, each, each for each of them a separate sin offering. But it's a point to understand that here we're speaking about situation that each melacha it's involved with karet. You know, with the isu karet, the Torah put a clear language of isu karet. Uh, but Lehe um, Alem, which means it wasn't come to his mind that it's um, it's Melacha. So now we go further and we said Hazorea Veachoresh. We start with Zorea and then planting a seed and then plowing. Now, the Gemara asks an obvious question, which is, as I told you yesterday, when it's come to the list, you see in the list the opposite. Gemara asks, Michdei mirkrav kerav bereisha litnei choresh vadar litnei zorea. Obviously, how a person does uh, usually, what's come first, planting, and then plowing, right? So now. He asks, one who sows and one who plows, since after all, in terms of plowing, one plows first and only then sows. So they said it should be the opposite way. So Tosfot tells us here that, um, that that's the process usually when you have to, when you're preparing a bread. So that's usually a um, um, uh, the process, right? So that's the the question. In other words, they care for this for this for this for the order that they put. Now, there is you should know that there is a serious machloket. Soon you see between Rashi and the Rambam what's involved here, what's exactly involved in each melacha. But let's first read. Tana be'eretz Yisrael kai. So the answer is that he was living in Israel, which is um, the halachot, the dinim, that applied to Eretz Yisrael. The zar e bereisha vehadar karvi, which means every play, everywhere else in the world, when you have a plowing field, and then you planted the seed, so you cover them with a little dust, right? But the, the ground in Eretz Israel was hard ground, so therefore, in order to plant the seed properly, what do you have to do? You have first to plow, and then you need to sow. So because you need to have it, in a sense, two times, which means, unlike elsewhere, that you do it in the, you know, the, the ground is soft, because you have to do it twice, so the Mishnah wants to tell us that even the second time of plowing, it's considering harisha, it's considering plowing, which means that the person is obligated. You may said, since I live in Israel, and the first one, 
I already did plowing before I planting the se planted the seed. So now when I do it second time, I may don't have any liability for doing it. So the Mishnah tells us, yes. Okay. But basically that's Rashi. Rashi hold that um, um, that the Av Melacha for plowing before and after it's equal, which means that um, when you use the term zri'a, planting in the ground, it means that you put it in the ground even you don't cover it. There is an excellent book called Lay Tal. That that's the way he um, 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 clearly understand the Rashi, explain the Rashi. Now, Tana. Now we elaborate the whole concept of Zorea. So why we need to elaborate on the concept of Zorea? Because Zorea is basically planting a seed. So now, since we speak about planting a seed, can be one melacha, that you have a lot of things that derive indirectly from that melacha. So they said, Tana, Hazorea, Vehazomer, Vehagozem, Vehazomer, Vehanutea, Vehamavrich, Vehamarkiv, Kulam, Mein, Melacha Achat. So, here, as we said, there is a machloket between Rashi and the Rambam. Rashi hold, when you use the term here, zomer, zomer, it's um, um, prunes, right? So, um, Rashi hold that is just tolada, which means it derivative. Rambam hold that it's melacha, that is type of work. Why it's very important for us? Because, as you know, first and foremost, the obligation of bringing sin offering apply only on Av Melacha. Okay? But um, here we see another important thing. We said, Hazorea, um, one who sows, the Hazomer, Zomer is someone who prunes, who take the, the small branches of the trees, Right or or or, or um, uh, uh, vineyards, vehanotea, and one who plants, which means just a little one um, of, of of a small tree, vehamavrich, and one who bends the branch of wine or a tree into the ground so that it takes root while still attached to the truck. So they said kulan melacha achatim. It's all considering as one type of performing labor. Now, so uh, what we understand? What do we understand? Since all of these melachot has a purpose, to do what? To make this plan, to grow this plan. So, Rashi hold that Notea is the same Av as Zorea. It's the same one. This meaning that one who's um, uh, planting a seed is the same as one who's sowing. There's no difference. But the only thing is, Zriya is like Av, is like the head. But he holds that it's basically the same. Zomer according to Rashi, it's not Av Melacha. The Rambam said that it is Melacha. So you see here the difference between Rashi and the Rambam. So now they said here, my Kamash Melan. What do we derive from all of that? What's the Nafkamina? What's the difference if we said earlier that they are all considering as one Melacha? It's all one category of Melacha. Ha Kamash Melan Ha'ose melachot harbe me'ein achat. That teaches us that one who does unwittingly performs numerous prohibition, prohibited labor, um, it, it, uh, some are under single primary category of labor. No chayav ela achat. He needs to bring only one sin offering. So. What's the Chidush here? So even we said that in the beginning of the chapter, so you may think 
that if you, you did something very similar together, so here they tell us that as long as, for example, if a person saw, he is a prunes, he is planted, he did all of that, but he did it in one shot, in one time. So here the brighter tells us that what? That he needs to bring only one sin offering, because it's all included. Now, the Gemara come here and divided all these five to two subcategories. One is called Zorea, sowing, and the second one is called Notea, Notea is planting a seed. Okay. Amar Rabbi Acha, Amar Rabbi Chia Bar Ashi, Amar Rabbi Ami. Zomer Chayav Mishum Notea. Zomer, so what we explain Zomer, what is Zomer? Prunes. We take the branches of wine to um, accelerate the growth. So he said this under the category of Notea, which means planting a seed. Which means that if he did both of them in one time, he needs to bring only one offering. Why? There is a concept that Rashi tells us here that it's what's the key point in Shabbat is Melechet Machshevet. What's the most important thing in Shabbat is what you're planning to do. You remember we discussed it yesterday and day before yesterday. Unlike others, when it's come to Shabbat, we take the plant, the, what you set up in your mind, the key point of re responsibility, of liability. So here he hold that someone planted the seed is the same as um, 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 sowing. is no different. Ve'anotea ve'amavrich ve'amarkiv. So he said, one who plants, one who bends, and one um, um, uh, uh, plan together. So chayav mishum zorea. So he is under the category of what? Of sowing. Which means, what does that mean? That Mishum Zorea? Because what? all of this is um, <coughs> considering Me'ein Melacha Achat, even each of them, you can do it separately, but because what the key point is, what you have in your mind, what the person has in his mind to do, one Melacha, right? So that's one of them. Rashi here said Klomar. And if you get a chance reading my book on Klomar, he elaborated and he said, In hunamei zorea hen ze'av bazra'im veze'av ba'ilanot. Rashi said here in Klomar, and again, we don't have the time here, but I elaborate that in my book, that the, there is a two different categories. One is the melacha of the planting, zra'im, and one is in a tree. And since each of them is different, that's the reason why we call it Zorea sowing. While the truth is, it appears like separate. And now the Gemara need to explain. And they said, what is appear what Rav Acha said? That if someone did Mavrich and Markiv, if someone did each of them, um, um, because they are so, so similar, Mishum Zorea and Mishum notea lo. So he said, um, uh, if is that to say that one bends and one grafts a branch for sowing, he is liable. For planting, no, he is not liable. So in other words, so these labors performed on trees are more similar to planting. So they said, Ema, it's much similar, Ema, you should say, Af mishum zorea, one is liable even for sowing. So in regard to Ilchot Shabbat, there is no difference between sowing and planting, which means that it's all under one category of Melechet Notea. So what is the Rabbi Acha Chidush here? That all these three um, are together. Um, let me elaborate um, on that another point. Imagine if a person takes... Um, let's say avocado or apple. 
he ate it, and now we see a little pit outside, and he threw it to the pit. Right? Now, let's say, um, suddenly it's a heavy rain, and you have rain there. And let's say a couple of weeks later, you have there a plant. A plant. What do you think? Well, depending on the situation, I think he violated several, a couple of different malachot, mm -hmm. not just planting. Okay, explain. Well, he threw it. So if he was inside a private... Uh, let's say in a private domain. When he throw, threw it. Within a private domain. Within the private domain. Okay, well, I mean, then it would seem to me it would either be planting or sowing. Okay. But here's my question. He did everything at the same time. So okay. you just bring one... Okay. Enough. But what does it say right at the beginning of the Gemara? That. It says, Rav Yochanan said that if someone performed all 39 of them in one lapse of awareness, he is obligated to bring a separate Khatat offering for each and every one he performed. Excellent. Now, let, now learned, let, so. me, let me lead you to what I'm, I'm aiming here in this particular case. I'm aiming to discuss <laughs> with you planting, planting, the whole process of planting. Mm -hmm. What exactly involves in planting? As opposed to sowing? Are you saying Flowing. that's different than sowing? Yes. Or? yes. I want to, to elaborate on this so you comprehend what's the discussion that we have so far. One way to plant a tree or to plant something, you dig something in the you ground. Dig a hole and, and you put the seed in the sapling. Seed, you right. cover mm -hmm. and you water it. Water, yeah. Here we talk about, let's say, um, watermelon. But it's, in, it's inadvertent, but still, though, you're, I mean, you know that if you throw a seed into the ground, that there's a chance okay. that it'll grow. I mean, yes, but when, number one, when it grows, Right away, you need it right away, or how long it may be take? Well, it may take a, probably a week, three weeks. Well, at least, yeah, I mean... A couple of weeks, number yeah. one. Number two, what he did, basically, he just threw it. He threw it, right? Yeah. The, the, what happened later, you know, it was a rain, and it was everything, and it's rubber, it's a heavy rain, and it planted and everything. He just threw it to a pit. You see what I'm aiming to tell you? The whole concept of Zorea sowing mm -hmm. and planting, the discussion here, it's the subcategory and category. If you're considering all of them as one, even the involvement of that, it's all part of one category of Zorea, or Notea, Notea is like planting, or you put it in a separate subcategory Mm -hmm. And as a result, you take each of them as a separate malacha. Clear? So, the, but the other is, the other malacha is, is just sewing, right? I mean, okay, if you go yeah. that way, that we're going step by step on the 39 malachot in the Mishnah. Right. So now we discuss the first, the first and the second. So, there's no, I mean, Notea is not a ab malacha, right? Excellent. So, I mean, so as, as, as I told you, Zoraya. Zomer, you know, for example, the pruning. It's a machloket if it's have melacha or not. Now you see the mindset of the Rambam and the Rashi. Rambam hold that Zomer pruning its melacha, it's, it's a separate melacha. Rashi said is 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 the derivative is only tolada. But the, the example I use is just to and to get to to understanding that there's a process involved here. It's well, it's in the same way that if you're sowing, I mean, watering is also is a is a subcategory. Yes, but I didn't go to the watering. I'm well, just I'm just saying, but so, so it's similar, so pruning is similar to watering then? In that sense, yes. But here, when I use that example on purpose, it's just show you that when you threw it and you put it in the ground, what do you have in your mind? Well, you had it in your mind to, to just throw it out. Now, the question is, is, is intent required in order to violate the malachah? The key point in Shabbat is the Melechet Machshevet. You have to plant in advance. You remember we... No, 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 but I'm saying what the intent of the person was. Is that is that critical to whether they violated the Melacha or not? But they didn't intend to do that. I mean, even though they didn't intend to do it, they still did it. By throwing, I mean, it would yeah. seem to me that if you... I mean, look, you, you throw it out in the pit, you know better. It might grow. 
Yeah, you throw it into you throw it into a, a can so a that process. there's no light. It's not going to grow. Correct, but it's a process of hashrasha. It's a process. It takes time. It takes. Uh, well, I understand that, but I mean, it's but this by the same token, going out and actually putting a seed in the ground, it's not going to grow for a couple of weeks. But that's still sowing. Yes, but the difference is when you planted the seed, you intend. To well, that's a, and that was my question. Yeah. So, is intent a requirement no, yeah, for? Yes. Digging. In general, to make things happen clearly, it, it has to have... So in order to be liable for a chatat offering, you have to have intended to, 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 to violate the malacha, not inadvertently. Correct. Okay. That's, that's, by that's the way, a, yeah. by the way, that's basically the heart of our discussion in a couple of days. That's like yeah. the intent to because in Ezekiel, the Shabbos. What? No, no, no. <laughs> because, for example, in Ezekiel... So tell me what you intended when you got in your no, car. No, because in Ezekiel... <laughs> Mm -hmm. If you, for example, drive a car, and you drive, a, you drove a car, um, uh, or, or you did something, um, and and um, and somebody jumped between cars, and you, God forbid, you hit that person, right? Just as an example, in the zikin, in the law of damages, so we go by the result. Right. Even your intent with to regard be, to, to damages, but is with regard to. The Chatat offering on Shabbat, intent is, it's not right. the action, it's the intent. Correct. So let's say, if Nezikim, if you walk at the top of the building, and you are a roofer, and suddenly a stone fell, and then somebody passed by the building, and he get hurt, right? Mm -hmm. Just to give them an example. So you always go by the damage. Okay? Shabbat, I keep telling you that is my, uh, what, what do you intend to do? That's the key. Okay, but here's, so here's my question with regard to that. So since the rabbis feel often it's necessary to build fences but in order to protect people from violating Torah law, mm -hmm. either because they don't have a full understanding of it or what, or maybe they, do, you know, they think that it's okay or whatever. So isn't there a concern then that perhaps people are going to take advantage of that, essentially just say, well, you know, I never intended it. So I'm not going to bring a katat offering. You see what I'm saying? So when it would seem to me that... Uh, Do you remember that not long ago we discussed situations that people take advantage of the system mm -hmm. and how we're careful with that? Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. We are careful. That's why I'm wondering why the rabbis allowed that opportunity for people to take advantage of the system, if you see what I'm saying. Because we have the just assumption, we have the assumption... That people that, want to... That people who wants to uh, follow the way that... Uh, you want know, to observe Shabbat, want they want to observe, observe Shabbat, Shabbat, and want if to they make a Shabbat mistake, that, that's truly a mistake, it's not a... Amar of Kahana, Zomer v'tzarich la'etzim, Chayav Shtay, Rav Kahana said, one who prunes a tree and needs the wood, right? So what happened here? What happened here? No, he needs the wood for, for example, in those days, you chop the wood and you fire. use it to warm your fire. home. Mm -hmm. Right? So, what's the situation here? So, you have Chayav Stein. He needs to bring two sin offering. Achat Mishum Kotzer. It's a ripping. The Achat Mishum Notea. And the second one is for planting. So, you see here, a situation that he needs. And when they say noter, they're really talking zoreh over there, right? Sewing. I mean, is that because it's that's the av melacha, right? Yeah, but 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 it's a good point. But uh, here, um, what we go, the Or Sameach said it, that it's under the category when we use noter is just um, part when you need this geffen, this this vineyard to to um, to grow. You need to do this type of planting. So it's just use a practical word. Amar of Yosef, Hai man de katal as pasta. Rav Yosef said, one who reap alfafa is liable to do what? Chayav mishum kotzer ve chayav mishum notea. He is liable for both. Um, why? Because as pasta, basically alfalfa, it's uh, the use here uh, for it's the animal animals. feed. Yeah, it's animal feed. Right. So, uh, so, that, so, what's the difference here? You think that when it's come to this, you maybe have just the reaping, 
right? So he said, I'm not by pruning, though, you're actually enhancing the growth as well. Correct. So you're doing both. So that's the reason why yep. you have to have two chataot. Amar Abaye, Haiman de Kaniv Silka. Abaye said, one who cuts beet leaves. So what happened here? So Rashi said Silka is tearing. Uh, but um, it's basically um, uh, uh, you can go uh, others, but, but let's say by Rashi, it's uh, it's uh, the way that it's appear better. It's beats. So Chayav Stein, he is uh, liable for two. Which one of the Achat Mishum Kotzer? One for reaping. The Achat Mishum Zorea, or not right? One sowing. sowing. Yep. Some said not there. Okay. So yeah, why? Because when you cut it, he enhances the growth, and, and he also re- derives benefit from the. Yeah, but the it parts will re- re- we. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. He it enhances the growth by trimming away the by pruning away, it yes. enhances the growth. Mm-hmm. So. Now we learn the Mishnah that those liable performing a, a, a labor, it's one who plows. What is the plows? Tana. We're learning to sefta. Hachoresh, Vehachofer, Vehachoretz, Kulam, Melachachatim. We learn that in the Brighter, one who plows, one who digs, one who makes a furrow in the ground, they all perform one type of labor. So if he does that in one time, no? How many sin offering he needs to bring? One. One. Rambam disagree with that. Rambam hold that each one of them it separate av melacha because each of them you dig in the ground, mm-hmm. right? So he disagree with Rashi in Yerushalmi. Rashi said that that um, if you dig in the ground is tolada, it's the derivative point. Um, uh, Egle Tal explained that, that this type of Zomer is Tolada of Notea, which means that it's a um, derivative of planting. But but here the point is, when it's come to Harisha, when it's come to plowing, what exactly involves in Harisha? Explain to me. What do you understand plowing? What is plowing? Well, essentially it's turning the soil over. Yeah. yeah. So you mean to say what happened to the soil? What do you do in the soil? Well, you're digging it and flipping it. Yeah, you're, so you, you're basically softing. Yeah. Sure. Softening, Softening the soil. Yep. Okay. 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 So, so um, that's Rashi point of view. And that's the whole issue of flowing. Rambam disagrees. You're saying that you're changing the state of it by softening it, essentially? Yeah, Rambam mm. said that you make it, it's called Yipuya Kalka. You make it better quality of, of soil. Mm-hmm. You so, do. So, if, for example, Mesakel Sadeu Be'avanim. If someone takes stones in his ground and he beautified his field. So according to that, that Rambam, that's basically plowing. Okay? okay. Now the Gemara brought another example. Amar Rav Sheshet, Haitalo Gav Shushit, Unetala. So Rav Sheshet said, one who has a mound of earth, and remove it in the house. Babai, Chayav Mishum Bone. He is liable. Why? Because he basically, evening the surface, is liable to the labor of building. Why? Because he engages in construction of the house. Basade, if he did it in a field. Chayav Mishum Choresh, he liable to the do of labor of plowing. Why? Because he softened the ground. Because the minute you take this part from the ground, the the Egle Tal explained that underground, the whole soil is softened now. Right? So Rashi hold, remember that's very important, Rashi hold that the whole idea of plowing is called Riku Hakarka, making the ground soft, soften the ground. Rambam hold that the issue here it's because it's called mashve et pnei He make the soil equal. 
So it basically prepare it for um, um, a, a sewing. So that's the issue. So you see a very different school of thought between Rashi and the Rambam here. Amar Rava. By the way, the way that the Gemara uh, uh, wrote it here, it's appeared that they are, they basically the liability here it's only in a field, mm-hmm. and not in a house. Because if you tell me the whole purpose is to prepare the ground for planting, so if it's a place that is not appropriate to plant, it, which is a, uh, the house, so it's not considering any type of plowing. But it is building. What? But it is it, building. Yes. Yeah. So that's the Orzarua, basically, in Ilchot Shabbat, try to say. Anyway, it is some type, but as under the category of plowing, it's in the field. Mm-hmm. Amar Rava. So the outside. Yeah. Amar Rava. Haita lo gmuma utmama babayit chayav mishum bone basade chayav mishum choresh. Rava said, one who had a hole and filled it in the house is liable to the, um, uh, due to the uh, liability of building. Building, right. In the field is plowing. Now, why it's so important for us to understand it? Because the, the, it's called afar tichoach, the, 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 the um, sand in the ground, it's changed the status. It's softened. So now it's, it's very good and healthy <coughs> excuse me, to plant. So when he equalizes and he makes it uh, straight, all this ground, he basically prepared, he did in his thought and his preparation, um, because early it was a hard ground, now it's softened. So that's the core of harisha, of plowing. Amar Rabbi Abba. Rabbi Abba elaborated, and he said, Achofer guma bebe Shabbat, ve'eno tzarich elel ha'afara patur alea. Beautiful. Now again, Melechet Machshevet. You remember Melechet Machshevet? Mm-hmm. Everyone with me? Okay. Rabbi Abba said, one who digs a hole on Shabbat, and digs a hole only because he needs the, its dirt, so he exempt from that act. Why? Because it's not a labor of digging that uh, prohibits the Shabbat by Torah law. Why? So now maybe you say that he has ruined the, the, the ground, ruining the ground, but again, what is his goal? What did he need? Just to use the earth that he digs out of the hole, for whatever reason. Yeah. Even according to Rabbi Yudah that said, Melacha she'elna tzrucha legufa chayav aleha, Rabbi Yudah said, general term, that one who performs labor that it's not necessary for its own sake, which means he uh, performs the labor for the purpose other than the direct result of his action. So he said, That's apply only when it's a construction, when it's a constructive work, that's fine. But if the purpose is destructive, right? Because what happened here is he ruining the surface of the ground of his house. So what you see here that Rabuda would agree that in this case he is exempt. The third one, the Hakotzer. We learned in the Mishnah that the third one is ribs. What is Kotzer? Tana. Hakotzer. That one who reaps. Habotzer. One who picks grapes. The Hagoder. And one who harvests a date. The Hamosek. And one who collects olives. You know, you still see it in the Druze in Eretz Israel. People does that. Kulan melachachat. They are all um, um, considering as one perform one type of labor. Why? Because it's all involved with what of picking fruits, right? So if someone does butzer, goder, mosek, kore. Any one of these, he needs to bring how many offering? How many? In which situation? This situation. That it's all similar to, to Zorah and Horesh. So if someone is reaps, he, he pick grapes, 
he had, uh, make the harvest days, he collect olives, he gather the figs. Wow. Amar of Papa. Another example of Ktsira. Hai man dishda pisa le dikla. If someone threw a clod of earth at the palm tree, ve atar tamre and um, um, at, at the palm tree and severed date. So what happened here? Chayav Stein. He needs to bring two sin offering. One achat mishum tolesh. One due to the severing because it's a subcategory of primary category of reaping. The achat mishum mefaret. And one for extracting, which is the subcategory of the primary category of okay, which then I, then I don't understand why then cutting grapes or harvesting dates isn't isn't two then because you have to cut them off too, you have to detach them and extract them. Yes, but but each of them it's part of the process. Yes. You cannot skip that part. Mm -hmm. You have to have each of them separately. Mm -hmm. But um, I must tell you, because we are limited with time that there is a heavy, heavy discussion among the rabbis what exactly involved and how you have a subcategory here. Um, um, a lot, a lot of, of a, a, um, explanation. If that's from the very early stage, it's a, when it's already ready, how you subcategorize that. Anyway, this agree of, of Rabashi. Rabashi disagree and he said, Rabashi Amar, אין דרך לישה בכך, ואין דרך פריקה בכך. רב אשי said that in that case is exempt, why? Because it's not typical manner of severing. And it's not typical manner of exerting. So, so because of that, it's, um, it's considering כלאחר יד, which is the שינוי, which means that by rabbinic law it's forbidden. By Torah law, it's not an issue. What does that mean, Kelachar Yad? It's not really that you don't intend to do, but you, you, it, it happens, um, um, in a sense, not in the manner that you used to do. For example, simple example. You need to open a refrigerator. How you open a refrigerator? You use your hand, okay? Imagine if you use your leg, back leg to open the refrigerator. How you call that? Kelachar Yad, it's... The refrigerator was open, but that's not the way people open their refrigerators. Okay? So according to Rav Ashi, he's totally exempt. But again, it's by the Rabbanan, by the rabbinic law, it's forbidden. The fourth one we said in the Mishnah, Vehame Amer, and one who gathered. So Amar Rava, Hai Man Dekanif Milcha Mim Milchta, Chayav Mishum Meamer. Rava said, one who gathers salt from salt pools is liable to the labor of gathering because he gathers a substance from the field into a pile. Abaye Yamar, and Imu Ela Begidule Karka. Rava said again that it's not because the prohibition of gathering, the Torah law applies only to produce that grows from the ground. So here, it's not come from the ground. It's um, and by the way, that's the halacha, that's the Rosh and the Rambam and all the others. The, the there is um, that's the the way. Soon we discuss the halacha. Ve'adash, ve'adash, one who is threshes. So they say Tana hadash v'amenapet v'amenapet kulam melacha achaten. They say that um, one who um, threshes, one who beat flax. Uh, to remove it from the hard cover of the stock. One who strikes cotton plant to remove the cotton seeds. So it's all one type of work. Hazore vehaborer vehatochen vehamerakel. One who's winnows, one who's selected, and one who grinds, and one who's sifts. So, so now they said, Hainu zore, hainu borer, hainu merakel. The Gemara asked the prohibition of labor of uh, um, winnowing is the same as the prohibition of selecting, and which is the same as the prohibition of sifting. So it's all identical. 
So because why you divided the food from the from the separating food from the company waste. So why you put it in a category of three different um, uh, uh, with a um, um, three different things, right? So Abai and Rava, Damri Tavayu, Abai and Rava, the both of them said, "Kol milta dehavia b'mishkan." Anything that was in a tabernacle, which means for the purpose of the tabernacle. Af al gav de ika de damyalei chashivlei. Even though there is a different labor that is similar to it, the Mishnah enumerated, which means every labor that was performed in a tabernacle is considering a significant. We learn today many, many halachot. So let's start with the Rambam. Rambam in Ilchot Shgagot. Shgaga belo kavanat isu. Someone did a unwitting without intent to violate prohibition. Even if one had the intention to perform a pro- prohibited action on Shabbat and ultimately perform a different pro- prohibited action, he is exempt from bringing a sin offering. He is exempt in a sense that um, that's the opinion of Rava. Mit asek bishar mitzvot. If in the cases of prohibited um, relations or prohibited food, if one acts unawares and he has no intent to perform the action, he is liable to bring sin offering. For example, in a case where there is a swallow something in his mouth that was thought that was a spit, spill and with no intention to eat it, and he turned to, to, uh, out to be a pro- prohibited fat that he swallows, so he's liable to bring a sin offering. In contrast, if one act unawares without the intent to perform the action on Shabbat, he's exempt from bringing the sin offering. Avot melachot, primary category of labor. The primary category of labor, that's the uh, Rambam, in Chot Shabbat, chapter 7. The primary categories of labor enumerated in the Mishnah are those for which one is liable to receive the penalty of either skila, if he performed the labor um, intentionally on Shabbat, and is liable to bring a sin offering if he performed the labor bishgaga, unwittingly. She'im asam kulam be'elem echad. Now we discuss, uh, they perform all of them in one lapse of awareness, which means the person is not familiar. One who was unwittingly perform multiple prohibited labors on Shabbat. <coughs> Even if he did so within one lapse of awareness, is liable to bring a sin offering for each primary category of labor that he violated. That's the opinion of Rabbi Yochanan. Hazorea ve'azomer, one who sows a, a planted bent branches, grafted and, and pruned in one lapse of awareness, he is liable to bring a single sin offering since all these acts are subsumed under the same primary category of labor. Zomel, chayav mishum notoya. One is liable of pruning any plant whose growth is accelerated in the manner. This activity falls under the uh, rubric in the primary category of prohibited labor of sowing. And if you remember, we discussed the difference between Rashi and the Rambam. Zomer tzarich la'etzim, if one prunes a tree because he wants to um, accelerate its growth, and he also wants to use the wood, so he's liable to performing the primary category of label of both, reaping and planting. Ha'choresh ve'achofer ve'achoretz one who plows, one who digs, one who makes farrow. One is liable for plowing if, uh, for constructive purposes, he digs a pit in the ground where there is no building is taking place. One, he digs a hole on Shabbat only because he needs its dirt. So they said one who digs a hole on the, uh, for the dirt rather than for the hole itself is exempt. This is both because the labor was performed not for its own sake, that's uh, exempt from plowing then? Right, and okay. it's a destructive rather than the constructive. That's the Rambam, uh, Ilchot Shabbat, chapter 1. Hakotzer ve'habotzer ve'agoder, Rambam, Ilchot Shabbat, chapter 7. 
one who reaps or picks fruits of any kind violates the prohibition of reaping. If he harvests different kind of fruit within one lapse of awareness, he is um, liable to bring only one sin offering. En imu begidulei karka, the Torah prohibits the activity of gathering items that grow in the ground. By rabbinic law, however, it is prohibited to gather anything from its natural environment. For example, um, salt from salt mines, as uh, neither Abaye nor the Rava disputes the prohibition itself. Their dispute was with regard to the decree of liability that action incurred. Hazorer, that's the last halacha of today, Hazore haborer veham meraked, one who's winnows, one who selects, one who sifts. The labor of um, winnowing, selecting, or, uh, and sifting are similar to one another, but are enumerated as three principal categories because they are performed separately, where? In the Mishkan, in the tabernacle. Yeah.